So for this introduction to media lesson, I want us to look at the media and our opinions. We're going to focus on newspapers mainly, but news in general and how it gets to us. So have a little think about what's going on in the world at the moment. At the time of making this video, coronavirus is of course the big issue. Black Lives Matter protests are also very, very big news and there's issues of representation going on there that we will look at in a lot more detail in future media lessons. But there's possibly other things by the time you're listening to this video that are current news. I want you to think, what's your opinion of it? What are the facts of what's going on? What influences your opinion? So where do you get your opinions from? Is it simply from parents? friends, social media, do you get all your news from Twitter, do you read the Daily Mail every day in paper form, can you say with your hand on heart that your opinions on a particular issue are entirely your own, or have they been influenced in some way? So there's clearly differences between social media and mainstream media, and I want you to think about what's had the most impact on your life and your opinions, and why might that impact be different for other people? Is that to do with your class, your age, your gender, your sexuality, your ethnicity? These could all have an impact on the way that you respond to the same media stimulus as others. Make a short list of what are the benefits of getting your information from mainstream media. And in a moment you can pause the video. What are the benefits of getting your information from social media? Make a list side by side with the list from mainstream media. Okay, so we're going to take this a little step further and here are two English football players, I'm sure you're familiar with who they are. Do you have an opinion on them? Who's a good player? Who is a national hero? Do you have certain opinions on either of them? Well, let's look at some news stories from around the time of the last World Cup. And there's the front page of the Sun newspaper. And I'm going to look at a larger image of that. You might want to Google it and find it if you want to see a really large image of it. And I want you to think about what does that front page tell us about the Sun's political outlook and readership? Can you think of how that might want to represent Britain to the world? Okay, done that. Let's have a look and see what I've got. So we can see Kane. Clearly he's very well known. Everybody, even non-football fans, will know who he is. And he is posing there in an image that represents confident nationhood, all ready for the World Cup. He's so famous, he doesn't even need his full name. We all know who he is. Uh, the English flag is very prominent in the image, draped over his shoulders. Overall, red and white are the dominant image. It's in the sun's masthead as well as anything else. Uh, we've got an exclamation mark. So that gives us a sense of cheering Kane on as if we ourselves at the football match. If we read that sentence at the side, back to face Columbia, uh, other stuff, it's very jokey, what we might call politically incorrect and um, actually what we probably mean is stereotyping, use of language and cultural references, connecting the sun's outlook to working class interests, we've got a betting advert going on there, there's an emphasis on the cheap price of the sun, compare that to one of the broadsheet newspapers, and of course all other news was relegated to the uh, inside pages on that particular day clearly the most important news. So overall we can see there's a clear outlook from the sun there. Is there a troubling racial element here? 
What, you might be thinking, of course not. It's a picture of a white man. Well, yeah, it's a picture of a white man. He was the captain of the team. But the rest of the team is far more racially diverse. Why choose an image of one white man to represent the whole of the England squad? That uh, headline caused some annoyance and there was a non-apology from the Sun the next day. OK, let's compare that with some headlines where Raheem Sterling is in the news. Here we see obscene Raheem. He's bought a house. He's well paid. It costs a lot of money. This is somehow obscene. I wonder what Harry Kane's house cost. Ooh, laughing gas. Yeah, not great, but he is a young man and he's uh, messing about. Hippie crack. It's going a bit far. Oh, what's this headline news? Um, he went to a party. Okay. Raheem shoots himself in the foot. Gun tat fury. A football player with tattoos. Again, headline news. So overall, if you stop and ask a lot of people what they thought of Harry Kane, very clean cut young man, wonderful football player. Raheem Sterling doesn't quite get the same representation in the mainstream media. But you might say, I don't read the newspapers. I get all my information from social media. So how influential are newspapers and our opinions, whether we read them or not? Well, let's go back a couple of elections. We might not have read The Sun, but Ed Miliband fared very badly in a lot of the mainstream media. He didn't win. And leading up to later elections, he didn't win either. So overall, looking at the newspaper front pages, as we have done, a newspaper assumes its audience is familiar with its codes and conventions, the types of language it will use, its abbreviations, the way it sets itself out, its slang. And what I want you to do is to pause the video when you can see the next two front pages, and I want you to make a list from what you see there. Who is the assumed audience? How can you tell? What do you think the two different newspapers are trying to do to influence the reader's opinion? Pause now, and I'll see you in a few minutes when you've made your list. If you're in school, I'll have a look at those lists if you hand them in. If you're at home, you can do this for fun. Here's a chart of circulation. Now, last week, at the time of making this video, the Daily Mail had gone up and the Sun had gone down. But still, the Conservative supporting dominance of newspapers is still there. However, on social media, there's an overwhelming pro-Labour position. Still didn't win the last election. So without wanting to steer you in any particular political direction, this is how the newspapers that you may not read influence opinions and influence your life. And when you have the whole idea of fake news, questioning what's real, what's not, we can all get very, very confused. So overall, I'll leave you with a quote from Malcolm X. We might not be reading the newspapers, but they might well be having a large effect on the way we think or the way that people around us think, and that is going to affect us in the end.